Dear Grade 12, I am Mrs. V. Ramlal. Welcome to the Junior Tucky Winter School for Grade 12s. There will be a series of videos which will be live streamed the next few weeks on Junior Tucky Online. Please use this material as revision and also look at all the Grade 12 content in Life Sciences on Junior Tucky Online. I will be going over certain skills that one needs to know in the scientific method. You have learned scientific method in Grade 10 and have been tested on scientific method for the past three years. However, there's just a few tips that you need to know on how to handle the scientific method in your matric exam. Right, let's do some revision of the scientific method. I've just put a document together just to help you be able to answer some of the questions we are about to do. Now, one must remember a dependent variable is a variable that is measured. So in your experiment, you are always going to measure a factor. Independent variable, I teach my kids it starts off with an I. So that's a variable that I, you are going to control in that experiment. And then you are asked a lot fixed or constant variables. Fixed, constant variables, they, must all, they may also use the word controlled variables. These variables always begin with the word same. Now, I always teach my kids when it comes to plants or animals. Always use same species of the plant or same species of the animal. For example, if it's same species of cactus, same species of piglet. Be specific. Don't just say spe same species of the animal. Using the word type is too vague. Now, I've shown you in this picture to explain to you why you cannot use the word type. This is an aloe. This is a cactus. They are both the same type of plant, xerophytes. But the aloe and the cactus will undergo many of their processes differently. And so if I do an experiment with both these plants, the experiment will not be fair. So you would rather use two aloes so that we know that the processes that will take place in the plant will be the same. So that's why it's preferred that we use same species of the plant, same species of the animal. When it comes to the plant and the animal, also they, they must be the same age. So these two will always apply to plants and animals. Now, I've also taught my kids that if you're desperate and you cannot think of anything, you must have same person to measure the growth of the plant or to measure link this variable to the experiment. Same person to measure the diameter of the pupil. So related to your experiment. Of course, you cannot have a, a person that has um, shaky hands and a person whose hands are steady. Then, of course, the measurements will be different. So if the same person measures the growth of the plant, the experiment is more fair and valid. Then, same instrument to measure the growth of the plant. You are included the ruler. So don't just say same instrument. Make sure you refer it again to your experiment. I hope this thing, this video and this worksheet makes things clearer for you. I hope you learn a lot now. All right, question 2.5. I have taken this question from the November 2019 paper 2, the final matric exam. Now, this is a very nice question that we can go through together. Now, before we even look at the questions, we must read the introduction and get some context on the question. So, the E. coli bacterium lives in the intestines of pigs where they reproduce rapidly. Certain strains of E. coli cause diarrhea in young pigs or piglets. Scientists carried an investigation using 100 piglets to determine the resistance of E. coli to two antibiotics A and B. The scientists injected the piglets with antibiotic A and antibiotic B, took a sample of E. coli from the intestines of each piglet a week later, and placed them in separate petri dishes, allowed the bacteria to grow for 24 hours, added antibiotic A to one petri dish and antibiotic B to the other petri dish, measured the growth of the bacteria in each petri dish after 24 hours, used the growth measurement as an indication of the resistance of the bacteria to each antibiotic, repeated the process over a period of six months, and calculated the average percentage resistance to both antibiotics. The results are shown in the graph below. So, the heading for the graph is average percentage resistance of E. coli to two types of antibiotics. On your y-axis, that's your dependent variable, which is measuring average resistance in percentage. And on your x-axis, that's where you have time in months. Now, 2.5.1. Identify, identify sorry, the independent variable in this investigation. It's one mark. Now, we already just had revision. Independent variable is what I control. 
Now I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking here, yeah, the independent variable is time. But very important, in the matric exams and in the grade 10 and 11 syllabus, you have to read the context or the passage or the introduction. And here where it says to determine the resistance of E. coli to antibiotics A and B, that is actually the aim. So let us highlight the aim. We have learned in the aim that you have the dependent and the independent variable. So your dependent variable will be the resistance of E. coli and your independent variable, what are you controlling? You chose to do the experiment with the two antibiotics A and B, but this is your matric exam. And we are scientists and we have to be very specific. So you cannot just say two antibiotics A and B. I have taught my kids also to always say types of antibiotics, but to even be more specific to say the different types of antibiotics. So that is 2.5.1's answer, the different types of antibiotics. Right, 252. Identify two factors that should be kept constant during the investigation. Now there you already see the word constant, constant, fixed, control variables. They ask you two factors that should be kept constant. Now we already know in my revision lesson that um, we said we, yeah, piglets are used. So two factors you can use same species of piglet, same age of piglet. Okay. You can even use the same method to measure the growth of the um, resistance of the bacteria or same person to measure. You can also use what I've taught you in our previous slide with a revision to this question 2.5.2 but make sure again they're only asking two so make sure you write your best two answers to ensure you get your marks I would have written same species of piglets same age of piglets so where you see the word constant this is a fixed variable here your answer must start off with the word same if you do not your answer does not start off with the word same you will not get these marks and lastly 253 State two ways in which the scientists ensured the reliability of the investigation. Now again, it is telling you, the question is telling you ensured reliability. That means reliability is already ensured. You have to select it. So firstly, the 100 piglets were used. So we know with reliability, you use a large sample size. So 100 piglets were used. That's what you could have said. The other thing that you could have said was, yes, the experiment, the scientists repeated the process over a period of six months and calculated the average percentage resistance to both antibiotics. So that is how you ensure reliability. We must also mention something about the sample size, which I've already mentioned here, and then repeating the investigation. But you cannot say repeat the investigation. The question says here ensured. So you have to write it as it is in the text. So this was the question in 2.5 in the November exam. I hope you learned a lot, but let's quickly go to the memo now. Right, here's the memo for 2.5. See, this is the metric marking guidelines, and there's only one answer on this memo. So if you said antibiotics A and B, you wouldn't have got your answer. It wasn't a specific answer. So again, learn to say type of, different types of. The second one they asked you, so the type of antibiotic was the independent variable. 2.5.2, look how many fixed variables they have. And it must start off with the word same. The memo says here, mark the first two only. Again, make sure you know your two best answers. There's our two best answers, same species of piglets, same age of piglets. I also taught you same method of measurement, same person doing the measurement. The other variables are much harder and apply more specifically to the experiment. So it's much tougher for you to remember those. So I've given you four generic ones that you can apply to your experiment. So that's 2.5.2. 2.5.3, look, ensured reliability. Investigation was done over a period of six months. It took many measurements. They used a large sample size. In our case, we said they used 100 piglets. And don't forget to say, Investigation was done over a period of six months, calculated the average resistance. This comes straight from the text, and that's how the person ensured reliability. This was a very nice um, question from the exam. I hope you carry on practicing more scientific questions. 
um, so that you can become better. Right, let's move on to another question that I've taken from an exam. This is question two. It's 2.1. I've taken it from the Gauteng prelim paper. So 2.1, diabetes insipidus, which is dilute urine, is a disease caused by a lack of ADH secretion into plasma. So this is a question that grade 11s and 12s can answer. Scientists want to determine the effect of this disease on the volume of urine that a person produces per day. Now, the investigation was carried on five male participants over a period of 30 days. The males were of similar age and weight. The average daily urine was calculated and recorded in the table below. Note, normal daily urine production is between 600 milliliters to 1,800 milliliters. There's your table with the individuals and what are you measuring? The average volume of urine produced per day in a liter per day. 2.1.1. Which individual would the scientists suspect of having diabetes insipidus? Now, that's 600 to 1,800 is normal daily urine production. So which individual can you see here produces a lot of urine? Okay, It's caused by lack of ADH and you should know lack of ADH then water won't be reabsorbed in your body and a lot of urine will be lost. So I can see from this that it's individual one. Give a reason for your answer. I just did. You will say the average volume of urine produced by individual one is much more compared to the other participants and um, yeah, that is your reason. So he has the highest, so you could have said he has the highest volume of urine produced per day. It's only one mark, so there's no need to elaborate. 213, what does the word plasma tell you about the type of gland that releases ADH? Now, again, this is a metric question. We know that plasma, okay, blood plasma, because that's where you've heard the word plasma before. And so, yes, ADH is secreted into the blood. So we know that it, the gland that secretes ADH is an endocrine gland. It's a gland that secretes the hormones directly into the blood. 214. That's our questions we were looking for. Identify the dependent variable in this investigation. Now, in our previous slide when we did revision, I told you that dependent variable is what you measure. Now, this whole five extra lines that they've given you, it's not because the examiner wants to waste ink and bore you. It says here he carried out an investigation on five males. The males were of similar age. Their average daily urine production was calculated and recorded. So what do you measure? What did these people on these scientists measure? The average daily urine production. So what is your dependent variable? Yes. And it is confirmed by this being in the table as well. So average volume of urine produced. 215. Identify two factors that should be kept constant during the investigation. Now, look how smart the examiner gets. I've thought you already same plant. For plants and animals, you use species and you use age. But look here. It was carried out on five males. You can't say the same species of humans, right? And of course, they had to be the same age, okay? And uh, But they have told us that already in the context. So the males of similar age and weight. So now you cannot... It says it should be kept constant, not that was kept constant in the investigation. If they said that was kept constant in the investigation, you give these two. The, the males were of similar age, same age and same weight. Now they're asking that should be kept constant, meaning they want two others. So now we can't use age, we cannot use species. What was the other two that I taught you? Same person to measure the average volume of urine produced and same instrument to measure the average volume of urine. So see, you can still apply the two that I've taught you. But be smart, be alert, because these are what the examiners do. When they realize you've learned a pattern, they get even smarter and ask you something else. 216, provide one precaution, which is a safety uh, measure that the scientists need to take when they conducted the investigation. It's only one mark. So now with our in the process we are busy in with COVID now, we're wearing masks. You could have said wear masks, but any scientific process. The person must wear gloves and gloves are there obviously to use so that we can prevent contamination and any toxic from spilling on our hands or any you can even say wear a lab coat as well so they just say provide them precaution not the reason right 217 state two ways in which the scientist improved the reliability of the investigation can you say can you see it says improved it's already done you have to take it from the text so they want two ways. So what will we look at? The 
The experiment was carried over a period of 30 days and the average daily urine production was calculated and recorded. So those are the two ways in which reliability was investigated. And then 218, you had to draw a pie chart for the information in the table. Right, let's look next. We're going to come to the pie chart, but let's look at the memo. Right, here is the memo for section B. So we can see who was the person that had the condition, individual one. Why? He had the highest volume of urine produced. An endocrine gland, yes, we just said that. The hormone is directly released into the blood. There we go, average volume of urine produced. Now, the fixed variables. Let's see if we got our answers for the fixed variables. Same person doing the measurement, same method of measurement. All the others here are good to learn, but they're also very, very specific. And you must really know your work very, very well to know this. Okay. 216, what's the precaution? Gloves. Wear gloves. Okay. The other two, again, participants, health is monitored by a doctor. Participants are provided with sufficient water and food. That's something that will be less likely for you to remember. So, but remember, gloves, masks, you can wear. 217, there we go. How was um, reliability improved? Investigation done over 30 days, and they calculated the average daily urine production. Right. If you remember, 218, they asked us to do the pie chart. Right. Let's look at the pie chart. Now, the pie chart is very important. And any graph that you get in your exam, you are only going to be given six marks for the graphs. Now, this is the key that one uses, the examiners use for the graph. T for type of graph means it must be a pie, a pie graph. C stands for caption. Caption means heading. And then you must have your both variables. So do you have the what you're measuring? Yes, the average volume of urine produced daily. What are you controlling? The five different males or the individuals? Yes, both variables are there. Are your labels, your sectors um, labeled? Yes, you can see there's your key. And then the calculations. And are the sectors drawn correctly? Now, the calculations are very, very important. You can see you get five marks for all the sectors calculated correctly. And if you get one wrong, you only get one mark. Again, here, yeah, all five sectors drawn correctly, you get one mark. And if there's any sectors are drawn incorrectly, you lose marks. So there's your calculation. You have to set it out in individual one, 2, 9, divided by 7, 9, which is a total, and multiplied by 360. It gives you degrees, right? And each of this, quite easy to do, right? So you get your portion that you're given. So in your text, so let's go previously, it was... Individual one was 2, 2, 9. He had the, he's the one with the disease over the total of all these numbers here, which is 7, 9. And then you multiply it by 360. And that's how you work out your degrees. Make sure you round off your degrees as well. When you're drawing your graph, make sure that your pie chart is about 10 lines big. Make sure you have a heading. And my advice is here we can see there's different patterns. We don't have time. You in matric, you don't have time to draw different patterns. So my best advice to for you in your matric exam is to draw a key. So you can write in your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then your key will be individual 1. Um, so 1 will be for individual 1, 2 will be for individual 2. Or you can write letters. So a key is much more accurate to use in a graph. When the marker is marking, the marker will use a transparency and put it over your sectors. And if any of the sectors are off by a millimeter, you do not get any marks. So you need to practice how to draw pie graphs, pie charts. You need to know how to draw all your skills very, very well. Because these are easy, easy marks to get in your exam. Thank you for watching this video on the scientific method. I hope you learned a lot. Join me and watch all my other videos as well.